Today I'm going to talk about Kalman filters. So the first thing to say about this is that um, Rudolf Kalman uh, proposed these filters and, um, in, uh, and what they do, the purpose of the Kalman filter is to filter the noise on things that are imprecise. So for example, if a robot is moving, right? Uh, there might be noise because there might be a couple stones in the uh, there might be stones on the road, and the velocity equations might not hold because the robot uh, slips or whatever. If a missile is traveling, right, you know, and you want to see where the missile is going, but then all of a sudden there's a cloud. Well, that's noise. Like you know, with the physics equation where it's going, but there's also sensors like a sonar or some some other sensor that tells you where the missile is, right? while you're not seeing it. So we don't just trust physics, for example, but we trust other sensors. And the whole combined input of those uh, will tell us exactly or, or much more precisely where the object that we're tracking is, be it a robot, a missile, whatever it is. Now, <clears throat> the idea of the common filter is one step at a time, like any uh, hidden Markov model, right? The idea would be to predict what is the state of the thing that we're interested in monitoring, a robot, a rocket, a soccer ball, anything. What is the status of that at time t? We'll take measurements at time t. We'll, by sensing our, you know, with our sensors or however it is that we take measurements at time t, and then we'll predict what's going to be our state at time t plus one. So a quick example is, let's say we have a little cart that has uh, two wheels and one sensor. So I have, say, a beacon or an infrared sensor that tells me how far I am from the beginning or how far I am from the end, depending on which direction this thing is going. But I also know the diameter of the wheels and the speed at which they rotate so I can, I can know the speed of the, of the cart going back and forth, right? Now, the sensor or I'm sorry, the, um, let's say at time zero, right, at t times zero, the, the card, the wheels and the equation of motion, right, will tell me that the robot is moving and it's approximately at this position. So there's always some error, like the terrain might not be great, um, it might be a little slippery, who knows? So the equations of physics will tell me, you know, exactly where I am give or take a little error due to some other conditions that I can control. So basically, the first um, measurement, which is how, how is the cart moving, will give me an approximate, um, an approximate idea of where I am, right, with some probability distribution of being in that area, okay? So again, I can compute this using, you know, uh, my, you know, my high school physics book, and it will tell me where, where I should be, more or less. Now, let's say now I move, right? Well, what happens is that because on the first, the first time, you know, I'm kind of pretty sure where I am, but now I move and there's more stuff on the road, there's more uncertainty of where I am, so the next time I predict my estimation of where I am at time t1, right, it's, again, still a probability distribution, but the error is a little bit bigger, right? First, I think I know around, I am around here, and then when I move, well, I think I know I, I should be somewhere around here, right? So every time you move, you introduce, or every time a robot moves or there's movement, you introduce a certain uncertainty. That's why we also want to uh, use a sensor for example, to help us estimate these things. Not just the diameter of the wheels and the speed, but also a sensor. Or not just the sensor, but the diameter of the wheels and, and, and have more than one way of measuring where uh, of more than one way of measuring where I am and where I should be. So for example, here we see that this is my prediction. I'm somewhere in this curve. I'm 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 somewhere in a range with this with this probability. However, let's say the sensor, which is a little noisy, doesn't measure exactly there, for example, right? Let's say the sensor measures and 
tells me that there's some noisy measurement, right? So the sensor, whatever measurement that is noisy, it tells me that I am somewhere in this in this vicinity with this probability distribution. The goal of the common filter is to say, okay, which of these two is more accurate? Which of these two has less error? It looks like the blue has less error. So I'm going to average these two things, but I'm going to give more weight to the measurement because it is more precise or it has less error at this point. And you come up with the second neuronal curve that predicts where you're going to be next, right? And it, this, this second, uh, this third distribution predicts that you're going to be somewhere around this, this point with a certain probability, in this case, the probability distribution uh, in green, right? So how do we estimate both of these, the, the orange and the blue probability curves, right? One could be the equations of motion, so I know what, you know, my high, high school physics book says. The other one can be the prediction of the sensor with its associated error, and I will learn how to look for which prediction is the best or the most accurate and have a, uh, an average, a weighted average of these two normal curves to produce another probability distribution, which is where I actually think the object, in this case, the cart, is. And that is the basic of, of common filters. Now we're going to see how this is done in the next video.